So what um, advantages have you, obviously you've talked about your mental state, which is fantastic Mm. and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. Are there any sort of other advantages that you've noticed by sort of doing this method for a period of time now? Yeah, sure. I mean, when I first did it, basically the press-ups allows you to be aware of uh, anaerobic and aerobic respiration. So that's with air, without air. And the fact that you can feel it at cellular level and feel how that feels... It was a light bulb moment for me that I, um, after I, I I went to Poland as a participant, and I would argue I was probably the world's worst participant in Poland, the least likely to become an instructor, because um, when every time we had to do a cold dip, I was like, oh, not no more cold. Like so I was tapping the instructor on the shoulder going, do I have to do this today? And he was like, no, and we don't have to do anything. This is no force, you know, it's, it's your choice. And I was like, I'm going to step out of this one. And then... Um, then I realised I was the only one not doing it, so I was like, "Oh, for God's sake!" So I went into the water. So, um, so yes, it was really weird. I didn't connect until the last day, if you like, and it took a mountain climb to to connect me um, to it because the water you you only need two minutes in the water, and that will give your body a, a hell of a lot of health benefits, the mind clarity, and everything like that. And if you're doing it regular. There's no point stressing your body out any more than two to three minutes a, a day. So I know there's some people who like to do your 10 minutes. That's also OK. But if it's a regular practice, four degree uh, and less, two minutes is fine. Um, so and my mind, my monkey mind was very good. Ah, oh, two minutes, I can beat it. So I went in the water and I just put up with it for two minutes and, um, and I got out again. So um, but it was the mountain climb that it was a three, three and a half hour, four hour walk minus 17 degrees and a snowstorm hit and I've never had my hair freeze it was freezing in that direction I had uh, snow on my eyelashes all stuff I've never experienced before Uh, it was absolutely cold and I didn't know when it was going to end so I it was a bit longer than two minutes so I had no choice but just to surrender and let go and being in the being in the military for a really small time of my life, surrender was not a very good word. It was a white flag and you've lost and, you know, the other team won. So uh, I saw it as a very negative word, but actually surrender is super powerful where you just let go, embrace. Uh, and just um, and it, when I let go, I wasn't I wasn't tensing at all. And it just felt very peaceful and serene that um, I actually started to feel warm by letting go. And it was just one amazing experience. And what I thought that my whole life had been, my mind had been controlling my body. And this was the first time that my body connected with the mind and we walked as one unit, which was a very serene, peaceful place to be. So I connected on my last day and that was the game changer for me. I just floated down the mountain and I just thought, wow, uh, what have I been putting off in life? I'm going to start living now. So I walked the Camino, which those who don't know is from the Pyrenees, um, St. Saint, Saint Pierre de Fort, all the way across the northern Spain to a church called Santiago uh, de Compostela. So I walked that in January and January in, in Spain um, was probably six to eight degrees, maybe a little bit warmer. Uh, which was positively a lot warmer than minus 17 I was in two weeks before. So I was wearing shorts. Uh, I was going into the rivers and lakes and I was walking, doing a little bit of breath work as well. And that was when I was sort of discovering basically that whole intense week that I had in Poland. It took me one month to process, rejig, find out what's going on. Internally, I felt very, very strong. Uh, that I decided when I came back to Canberra to run a marathon without any training, any conventional training. And that was when I used my breath work um, and my knowledge from the Wim Hof, my previous knowledge of Buteco method, because I was had asthma when I was a child. Um, and the Buteco method is um, shallow, like light breathing and holding your breath, which is to build up your carbon dioxide which in turn will stop you having the asthma attack. So it's a preventative against using an inhaler, which I now know is um, what's spun off that is the oxygen advantage. So it's uh, very similar to the the oxygen advantage um, and how they work. So um, so basically what I what I've understood is that I could run a marathon if I stayed in my um, aerobic. So with oxygen. So the aerobic is in the cell. There's I'm not going into too much detail, but there's a mitochondria known as the powerhouse of the cell. And in the in the mitochondria is a Krebs cycle. And normally it produces one to two molecules of ATP, which is energy. 
And when you're really using it at a full pelt, you can produce 36 to 38 molecules of ATP. But the best thing about that, so you feel lighter, feel like you've got more energy, but you don't have that um, lactic acid buildup, which you would get if you were in the um, anaerobic respiration where you go into the glycolysis and then you have lactic acid and only a couple of molecules of ATP. So um, I knew that I had to stay with air when I was running. So combining that with the Buteco, I knew that I could run if I had my mouth taped or closed and I just breathed in and out through my nose, which is very similar um, to the oxygen advantage. So, um, so that's how I was able to run my marathon and five weeks later, my ultra marathon without any training whatsoever. So um, not any running training, um, but I was doing a lot of breath work. I also knew that two minutes in the cold water was equivalent to a 40 minute run for your cardiovascular system. So I was saving myself 38 minutes of running, you know, just by sitting in a cold in the cold water. Um, so I did that twice a day thinking, oh, you know, I've just clocked up an hour and a half worth of running internally because for the cardiovascular system, it's vasoconstriction, um, vasoconstriction, vasodilation. And you're basically fighting that in the water. And I, I say fighting as it's not like I've got to fight it. It's just it's naturally happening. Um, so it's a very good workout for your for your cardio, cardiovascular, the veins, arteries, capillaries and stuff. Just to get uh, a feeling of that, the, the um, I suppose the cardiovascular system can go three times around the world. So you, you do that. It's quite a good, intense workout. Um, to do that so I was sort of biohacking in my training so I knew that cold water would help my cardiovascular system I knew the breath work will stretch my ability for anaerobic aerobic respiration I also knew it would affect me for the pH level the blood pH of alkalinity um, and acidity and I also knew it would help with my parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system which is for simplicity it's fight fight or freeze or rest and digest so it's a I was just flexing my elastic band in all ways, which would, which is ultimately a very good preparation for um, an endurance run, knowing that your systems can can work um, no matter what stress you kind of put on it. So very long answer. So discovering the Wim Hof method, I was able to run a marathon and an um, ultra marathon without any training, um, walk a Camino um, with just in shorts, and uh, and also it's helped me to to release or realize early life trauma just from the breathing without reliving the memory. So, so much just from one method.